on um, Friday night <clears throat> we, uh, and Saturday morning we had a men's retreat uh, down at Goolwa and uh, because we're all uh, boys and really struggled to talk with each other, uh, Derek and John had uh, given us some questions, fairly lightweight questions. The first question was, um, uh, did God find you or did you find God? Well, that's like a three-century sort of question to answer in a sense. But um, really, in a sense, what we want to look at, consider today is to think that God, Christmas really tells us that God came to us. He came looking for us. He came searching for us. And he entered in to our experience. So... At Christmas time, we see something of, um, of, of God's answer to that question. Did God look for us or did we look for him? He came for us. We've just finished a series in the book of Revelation and uh, we learnt that that uh, Greek word, I can always struggle, I always struggle a bit, but apocalypsis, uh, we sort of um, think about it today as mass destruction, whereas what we saw right through the book of Revelation was that the word really means to come out of hiding, to be unveiled. The curtains are drawn back and we see Jesus in a new way. And I, I want to say to you that Christmas, we start to see another beautiful picture of God. It's a revelation of God in the form of Jesus Christ. And uh, God calls us to respond uh, to that. Uh, let me just read from uh, John chapter 1, and we're just going to read the first uh, 18 verses. It's a, it's a beautiful background, and you can take this passage as a background to what happened at, at Christmas. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him not one thing was created that has been created. You look on the manger, and here is, here is God entering our experience. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, in our darkness. And yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but he came to testify about the light, the true light that gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of natural descent, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so at Christmas time we remember the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and exclaimed, this is the one of whom I said the one coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son who is himself God and is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. It's an amazing picture as we think of God coming in, God himself coming into the world. There's a little verse that's been running through my mind as I've been thinking about today. It was Jesus, as he grew up, 
and uh, started his ministry, there was a beautiful home that he loved to retire to. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, uh, Lazarus brothers and sisters. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, there was a shadow of sickness over the home and, uh, and Lazarus eventually died. But Mary and Martha had sent a message to Jesus to come and he didn't come till a, a bit later. And by that time, Lazarus had died and, and Martha goes out to see him and uh, talks with him and then she calls for Mary and she says, Mary, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. And uh, I, I thought what a beautiful framework to think about Christmas. The teacher is here. He's come to us and he's calling for us, for our lives. What is a teacher? When I was, uh, I, I used to work for a while, about 12 years, in the property section at uh, Adelaide Uni. And we had to try and work out what was needed in the way of teaching buildings. And I had to learn a new word, uh, pedagogy. And uh, I, I really didn't know what it meant, but it means really ways of teaching, how to impart knowledge and skills. And and uh, most academics, uh, many of the academics just had different ways of teaching. How do we communicate? And we just want to think about how Jesus has come and he wants to teach us. And, uh, and, and you, go to the, you go to the manger there in Bethlehem, the feeding trough, where the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, uh, that, that's his crib. And, and you start to see something of the humility of God, that he's willing, as it says in Philippians 2, um, do nothing out of selfish ambitious, uh, ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Have this same mind in you that was in Jesus Christ. He came, he humbled himself, he was willing to enter in to a humble situation for us. Existing in the form of God, he did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to give his life as a ransom for many and when when we start to think about god like this sometimes we're not very comfortable in the classroom of humility we've we've got our rights we've got our expectations and if there's one thing I want us to start to think about is as we look at Jesus there in, in the manger, there's no room for him in the end. He came to his own and his own didn't receive him and yet he didn't give up on us. Uh, I became a Christian. That wasn't the first time a faithful Christian had shared with me the gospel, but I didn't have time for Jesus. But Jesus kept chasing after me. Jesus kept looking for me. And uh, as we think about Christmas, Jesus has come to us. And, and the classroom, we're not so keen on the, 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 the manger kind of classroom, humbling ourselves. But we have to. If we're going to come to Jesus, we have to humble ourselves before him and hand over our lives to him. And Jesus changes the classroom setting and he, he takes the disciples out on the middle of a lake. And uh, I'm sure if you'd asked the disciples, they would have said, um, I'd much rather be sitting, uh, sitting in the sun on the side of a hill listening to the Sermon on the Mount and I can stretch out in the sun, I can take a few notes. But then Jesus, the teacher, takes us 
out into the middle of a lake in the, in the worst storm we've ever seen. And, and he says, I want to teach you faith, to trust me. And then, and then they get to the other side and it's probably still night and they're in the middle of a cemetery. And a man who can just snap chains comes up to them. And Jesus said, I want to teach you that you can trust me, that you can depend upon me to change even what seems to be the hardest person you know. And Christmas time, we can sometimes have to deal with families. And, and families can sometimes be the hardest test that God puts us through. And, and Jesus is saying, just trust me in the midst of these situations. I've entered in to your situation. I've come to you so that you can learn to trust me whatever happens. How do you build a house? I, I could sit down and I could tell you a lot of the steps, but that just didn't happen. My father was a builder and, uh, and I worked for him um, and, uh, and I would just watch him. He would uh, teach me certain things by, by word. Other times he'd teach me things by example. And Jesus has come, in a sense, as a real working model of what God looks like. How does, how does he teach us about God? The word, as it says in the message, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. And I want you to think not of Jesus in a little manger in Bethlehem, but today the teacher is here and, and he's calling you right in the midst of where you are, where you live, in all your difficult family relationships, in all your difficult work situation. He's calling you, he's here. Today, in the city of David, a saviour is born for you who is Christ the Lord. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And as Jesus' parents brought him to the temple, he said, he said to God, he took Jesus in his arms and he said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promised, for my eyes have seen your salvation. You've prepared it in the presence of all peoples. It's a light, a revelation to the Gentiles. What does God's salvation look like? It looks like Jesus, who has come to us, who has come to us seeking us out. You say, well, what, what's God really like? Well, at the beginning of Hebrews are some amazing verses. He says in Hebrews 1, you know, long ago God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets at different times in different ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. So Christmas time, we remember that God himself has come and he's come to speak to us. And the son is the radiance of God's glory and he's the exact representation of our Heavenly Father, the exact representation of God. And we, we just would struggle in a sense as, as our passage that we read says, no man has ever seen God, but Jesus has come so that we can. And as you read through the Gospels, as you see how Jesus responds to all these different situations, that's God that you're looking at. You're seeing how God would respond to every person, to every situation. It, it took a while for the disciples to understand this, just as it does for us. You know, Philip says in John 14, uh, you know, Lord, just show us the Father, and, and that's enough for us. And, and Jesus says, have I been with you all this time and you don't know me? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? 
Jesus has come to teach us about God, to show us what God is really like. He's come to show us salvation. Zechariah's prophecy, blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited, he has come and provided redemption for his people. You know, for many years, I I thought I had to try and be good enough for God. And it was like a ladder. Um, You know, in the Old Testament, it talks about Jacob's ladder. And I thought, well, step by step, as my life gets better, I can climb my way up to God. But Christmas is the beginning of the unfolding drama of redemption where God comes to us. And God becomes our saviour. So instead of climbing, we've got to repent and by faith receive the gift that he gives to us. He who has the son has life. He's come to me. How's God going to teach us to live day by day the, the outworking of the gospel? Well, he came to be born and to live that life of dependence. He said, I I can do nothing apart from my father. And uh, Christmas says to us, he's entered in to our experience to show life as God always intended life to be lived. Independence, to live the life of God in dependence upon him day by day. And, And so that Paul could say, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I live, I I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hebrews tells us in chapter 2 that since the children have flesh and blood in common, Jesus shared also in these that through his death he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. He's entered in as a, a fully human, fully God and yet fully human, not, not uh, 30% human and 70% God. Or He's both fully God and fully a, a, a human being. He had to be like his brothers and sisters in every way so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest in matters pertaining to God to make atonement for the sins of the people. So as we think about Christmas and the baby in the manger, it's only the very beginning of an unfolding story. But he had to be a human being to be able to take our place on the cross, to die for us. And one day, he's coming again. We've just seen that in the book of Revelation. And uh, he's coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. So Jesus has come. He's come to us. He's come to show us salvation. He's come to show us what God is really like. He's come to take our place on the cross. How does he meet with us? I've been reading a book by Tim Keller on encounters with Jesus. And he has a chapter on the two sisters, Mary and Martha. And uh, And Martha, who's uh, in a sense stormed out to meet Jesus when he's finally come and Lazarus has died. And uh, and she said, oh, if you'd been here, if only you'd been here. And, And he has to say to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. I have come to be your full salvation. It's not salvation, it's not in an institution. There were plenty of religious people when Jesus came but I am your salvation you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins and and so let me say to you Jesus knows what we need and uh, and he comes to Martha Martha needs to be reminded of Jesus 
is her salvation. He's everyone's salvation. But he comes to Mary. Martha goes back and says, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. And Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him. Oh, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. How often we, we forget that Jesus is here in the midst of just our struggles and things we're going through. And, and when Jesus saw her crying and the, and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit. Jesus is here. He's not above all the trials and struggles and, uh, you know, good news, there's going to be more next year. And it's just, but Jesus is here to live with us and help us. And, and Jesus, uh, Jesus wept. He's, he's not above our suffering, our sadness, our heartache. And, and Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. And uh, Tim Keller writes, I get frustrated with virtually every English translation of this word, deeply moved. The, the Greek word is almost like to bellow with anger, to be f- absolutely furious at death and all the suffering that sin has caused. Jesus has entered in to our world, into our situation, and, and he knows what you and I are going through. So in response to Mary, Jesus comes with tears and and with a righteous anger. See how he loved him or see how he loves you and me. He became, at at Christmas time we remember, he became mortal. He became vulnerable. He became killable for you and for me. He's loved us and given himself for you. It's not just a miraculous birth. It, it's, it's not just a fulfilment of the Old Testament. It, it's not just to live a perfect life. But as we think about the incarnation, about God entering the world, it's, it's a call upon our lives. Unto you is born a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. He's asking for you. And, and he says uh, later on in John 1, come and see. Jesus is calling for you and he says, come and see. Come and see more of me. And make it, uh, you know, uh, we, um, we sometimes think, what is my life about? And, and Paul said in Philippians 3.10, that my aim is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Come and see. And uh, as you come into a new year, make it your aim uh, to read the scriptures, to really come and see who Jesus is. And then he says, follow me. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Follow me and I'll give you a purpose in your life that can never be taken away. And later on in John He says, you didn't choose me. This is a pretty direct answer to the question that we started with. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So I want you to take that little phrase into this Christmas. The teacher is here and and he's calling for you. There's the beautiful carol. I don't know whether we're singing this one, Beck, or not, but he came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. And his shelter was a stable and his cradle was a stall. With the poor and the mean and lowly lived on earth our Saviour holy. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he has gone. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. As we come around the table of our Lord, 
It's a time where we remember that Jesus has come for us and uh, we see his way of salvation by grace through faith. We come to see that he has come to give his life as a ransom for many. And as it says in 2 Corinthians, he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for the one who died for them and was raised. And so we take the elements, the bread, representing his body and in his body he bore our sin. And his blood, the the cup representing his blood that washed away our sin and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. So join with me as we come around the table and uh, remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.